someone wanted me to talk about the fear barrier. So sometimes I refer to this phenomenon that occurs when you're close to awakening or you've been doing intense self-inquiry or a one-pointed practice and you move beyond thought or you start to move beyond thought. What I mean by this is that you start to move beyond the constraints of the conceptual self. You start moving beyond what feels like a constant restructuring of your experience in time as a person in the mind. This has a very distinct feel to it. Sometimes I describe it as a plunge or stepping off a cliff or moving into the beyond or moving into the void or moving into the unknown. There's no exact term for it, but it's beyond the point where you've knowingly exhausted the abilities of the conceptual mind to give you what you want, to deliver the goods, to answer the question, who am I? Or what is Mu? Or what is suffering? Or who is thinking? Whatever the fundamental question is, the fundamental urge to breach the barriers of identity. When we've exhausted our belief that we can think our way through this, that the safety of the conceptual mind, the apparent safety of the conceptual mind, which reforms again and again, the collection of concepts that we structure together to keep ourselves feeling like we're oriented, like we know what's what or who we are. That house of cards that can actually offer some sort of stability when we want to remain partially unconscious, but becomes obviously the fundamental illusion when we really start doing inquiry in earnest, or we work on a koan, or by other means we render the conceptual mind inert. We see its limitations instinctually and begin to move beyond its limitations. So if you can feel into that, or you've been there, you understand it becomes a sort of precipice where we're truly moving into the unknown. We're moving beyond any ability to use a concept, a mental image, any information or understanding to stabilize our identity. So we're investigating the nature of identity itself in its most raw form, which might feel like pure being or just being or pure knowingness without formulating an object of that knowingness. So when we do this, when we come to this place and we instinctually know it's time to let go, often what happens is we feel a fear, an intense fear, maybe even a terror. But hopefully by this point, we realize that any description of this, any label for it, any understanding of it is a mere thought. And we're letting go beyond that. We're seeing what's beyond that. We're proceeding beyond the reach of conception. So we usually perceive that this is really a intense physical experience that would typically be called fear. And I sometimes call it the fear barrier, although it's not a true barrier because it's not preventing anything. It's our reaction to it, our understanding or misunderstanding of it that can make it into a barrier. Another way of talking about it is it's just a rite of passage. Yet another way of talking about it is it's just the body's physiologic response to what it perceives as a certain kind of dying or a massive letting go, letting go of what it's been oriented to for a long time, which is the apparent 
separate self, which is made out of concepts. Now, it's not just concepts. It's a feeling, a sense of location, an instinct to grasp again and again. All of that is tied together and it feels like you. That's what you're actually going beyond. So the body will interpret that as a kind of death or at least a threat to its existence. Now, this isn't a threat to the body's existence. It's not really a threat to the mind's existence. It's a threat to the existence of an illusion. And it can be quite intense. So some of the questions I've had recently about this are, what do I do about it? What do I do if I came up against this fear barrier and chickened out or backed off? Did I lose my chance? Also, I've had the question whether or not what I experienced was this fear barrier you're talking about. So first of all, I've referenced this in other videos as well. But what to do about it is nothing. Just keep doing what you've been doing. If you've gotten to the point where you're able to let go of the cognitive identity structures, if you've gotten a feel for that, you know the taste of that, just keep going in the same direction, which is no direction and recognize that any thought about the fear barrier or fear or I'm going to die, any of that is just thought. It's just more opportunities, in quotes, to grab back onto identity, to turn it back into a story. Just keep letting go. Remain in the experience. And what you usually find is that the fear experience, the physiologic experience, which can be very intense, ultimately will fade at some point. You'll move beyond it. Also, it's not uncommon to be surprised by this, even if you've heard me talk about it or heard others talk about it, that when you actually experience it, it's like, whoa, I didn't think it was going to be like that. But that's usually just the first time. It's kind of like the surprise in addition to the fear. And you tend to sort of back off or get up in your head for a moment or stop meditating for a while or something like that. But the conclusion can be, oh, I've missed my opportunity. You haven't. If you know how to lead yourself back there, that's what's key. What happens with the fear response doesn't really matter that much because ultimately it will subside. Or you'll come back to this point again and at some point it just won't be there doesn't really matter either way. It doesn't matter if you have to come into contact with that fear barrier 10 times. Just know that the point is to keep on going, which means keep on not grabbing back on to identity. That's the key to all of this, is to realize the fact that you're going through this fear barrier is itself a rite of passage. It just means you're in the right place. Any doubt about this that says, oh, I'm not sure if this is the right fear barrier or maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be experiencing, etc. Those are just responses to fear. Those are, again, these little opportunities the mind gives you, the life preserves it, throws you to try to reel you back in. Don't grab onto anything here. Don't grab onto any belief, memory, thought, perception. Just let the experience take you to the place that's wordless, indescribable, without any boundary, without any conceptual framework. Whatever is experienced is experienced. So be it. Even the labels of experience are thoughts. Those are the life preservers. Don't grab onto the life preservers. We're going to find out what's beyond what we call life, what we believe is our life. <laughs>